Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Todd Beardsley, obviously. Uh, I work at Tipping Point, and I'm the lead counter fraud engineer, uh, which is uh, a very awesome title. And it basically means I spend a lot of time looking at phishing websites, uh, bank fraud websites, uh, spam, uh, quite a bit of that. And that's pretty much my main area of focus. Um, and to that end, I spend a lot of time looking at, at evil websites. And I do it, of course, uh, safely in VMware, but I really like Firefox. And uh, I was getting really irritated uh, that every time I wanted to know something more about the website I was on, I had to go and control tab over to some other window and ping or trace route or open up Netcat or do some host of other keystrokes. And uh, I'm incredibly lazy. So because of that, I got involved with this project, Monkey's Paw. So let me back up a little bit and talk about Grease Monkey. How many people here are familiar with Grease Monkey? Heard of it? Seen it? No? OK. OK, about 12%, uh, I'd say. Um, Grease Monkey is awesome cool. It is an extension for Firefox, uh, and it allows you to uh, inject your own custom JavaScript into the page that you're looking at. Um, it was described by uh, one of the primary developers, uh, Aaron Bodman, as bookmarklets on crack. Because uh, bookmarklets, uh, if you've worked with those, are, are fine and wonderful. And there's, there's little JavaScript bookmarks that do typically one function on the page you're looking at. Uh, but they're not persistent. And uh, they, they have some, some pretty serious limitations just based on, on size. Uh, so he developed uh, Grease Monkey, uh, which is a great and wonderful API uh, for doing lots of JavaScript code on your own. Uh, mainly designed to, like I said, fix broken websites, uh, make things prettier. It's not really a re replacement for um, Adblock, which uh, I'm sure many more of you are familiar with. Um, Adblock is much better at, at, at rewriting websites and moving ads. Uh, but this uh, Grease Monkey is designed primarily just to mess with the, uh, the document object model uh, as you see it. And, and it really kind of fulfills, I think, uh, the promise that, that Firefox made uh, about two years ago of uh, it's, it's your browser, it's your internet, right? So um, I will see if I can, I can actually do some local things uh, without the network, so let me see if I can do that. Uh, so as an example, where am I? Do, 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 do. So this is an example user script. Um, as you can see, it looks an awful lot like JavaScript. Um, is the resolution OK? Yeah. Um, and so essentially what this guy does is that uh, it detects um, if an image on a website is foreign to the site that you're looking at. Uh, it's pretty standard. And all this guy does is uh, uh, determine that it's, that it's foreign based on the source of the image. And if it is foreign, uh, it'll re-render it uh, with an added style of a dotted red outline. And uh, unfortunately, I can't get any uh, foreign images right now because network's down. So, and it also uh, re-renders the title, so when you mess over it, uh, it'll tell you what the real source is, uh, what the previous alt text was, uh, and space permitting. Uh, it'll give you the, the width and height. Pretty, pretty basic stuff. This is, this is generally the kind of thing that, that Grease Monkey was, was designed for. Um, however, uh, as soon as I got involved in it, I decided that this Grease Monkey would be really cool as a security tool um, because you can do things like, uh, I'm going to skip the Plasma stuff right now, unfortunately. Uh, you can do things like uh, query uh, other sites about the site that you're on. No. And let me see if I can pick up some wirelessness. I apologize. Nope. Not yet.
Ooh, it ain't fell. Google's down, I know. Come on, thank you. Oh, hello. That's kind of a funny address. All right, well, we may have a solution forthcoming. Hooray. Anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about Grease Monkey in the meantime. So this guy is Grease Monkey, and this is all my Grease Monkey scripts. Uh, basically, what Grease Monkey does, I think I've gone over that, uh, but it, uh, it doesn't interact directly with the page that you're looking at, um, so it is fairly secure. Um, you are, when you run Grease Monkey script, you're not injecting like script tags into the page uh, that you're viewing at the moment, but you're in fact injecting it into the DOM that's in memory. Uh, and it all incidentally does this all in, a, in its own Grease Monkey sandbox. Um, and so the, the upshot of that is, is that foreign web pages uh, can't redefine methods and objects uh, to screw with you and your, your Grease Monkey-ness. Um, which is, which is handy. And this was not always the case, unfortunately. Uh, back at uh, about two ver three versions ago, uh, it was possible for, for evil websites to uh, commandeer Grease Monkey, which is kind of a bummer because Grease Monkey also exposes some functionality that normal JavaScript in Firefox does not allow you to do. Uh, namely, uh, and, and probably most significantly, uh, the API uh, GM uh, XML HTTP request, uh, similar to X the regular old XML uh, HTTP request, except that unlike Firefox, Grease Monkey can go out to foreign domains and incorporate uh, uh, data uh, from those foreign domains into the page you're looking at. Um, this obviously is, is terrible security um, for, for normal cases, but because you're running in, in your special sandbox, it, it's generally okay. Uh, there is, there's still remaining a slight problem uh, with the security model in that you can still detect Grease Monkey remotely. Like if I go to a user script here, uh, it draws. That's kind of hard to read. It draws uh, this little pop down uh, in your window. It's actually pop down uh, from the Chrome, and so it does make your total window size slightly smaller. Uh, so uh, websites can evaluate your total window size before and after by trying to load a Grease Monkey script for you uh, and then detect that you're using Grease Monkey and then, of course, present different data uh, to uh, foil your forensic e e efforts. So let me bump through just the feature set here. I don't think I'm going to be able to demo anything, but that's unfortunate. Uh, in your book, uh, it, the slides are correct uh, where Grease Monkey lives, or where Monkey's Paw lives and where Grease Monkey lives. So you can download it at your leisure and mess around with it yourself. Uh, and that's all live right now. So let's go over some of the feature sets. So with Monkey's Paw, um, I do end up drawing a console, and I can actually demo that. 
Grief monkey. monkey can also act locally, too, if you don't need. I'll go ahead and load that. And so now in my page, and let's pretend this is out on the internet, uh, I have this console uh, down here. Uh, and I have a bunch of options now, what I can do with this guy. I can. Uh, I can do an IP query. Uh, what this guy does is he goes out to a webified uh, name uh, resolver. Uh, in this case, uh, it's at cc.org. Uh, they're, they're pretty quick and reliable. Uh, so I will look up this domain name, uh, which obviously won't work in this case because A, I can't get to CC and B. There's no domain for files. Uh, it'll look at that. And then uh, I also uh, look up uh, some geolocation information uh, from the free geolocator, what is it called? Uh, HostIP.info. And it's uh, fairly accurate. Uh, it's very accurate for countries and reasonably accurate for uh, cities. So you can be looking at your evil eBay site and say, aha, you guys are in Hong Kong. And there's, so I can expect at least two days for you guys to shut down. Uh, incidentally, these pop-up boxes are draggable and all that fun stuff there. Uh, so I can do other things like a DNS lookup. Uh, this uh, pretty much hooks into uh, Netcraft toolbar data source. Uh, they have a whole web API uh, open for that. And so the big bonus for there is that you get to use uh, their, their data and their lookups uh, without submitting the Netcraft uh, tracking information that comes with your toolbar. Which is, which is nice for privacy dorks. And uh, server info, and again, imagine this is all actually happening. Uh, server info gives a uh, syntax highlighted uh, uh, reading of all the HTTP response headers uh, from the page you're looking at. Uh, and it's highlighted specifically for things that I'm interested in, uh, mainly things like you know, the version, obviously, uh, I want to look at um, you know, any installed modules. These are going to be highlighted. Uh, things like you know, PHP and uh, whatever. Uh, I'm going to be looking at, uh, I, I dump them all, but it's all colored uh, fairly differently. And there's some funny stuff in there. Uh, and then uh, finally, I have a handy report box. And this guy comes up, oh, hey, am I able to talk to the internet now? Uh, but what's this? Oh, hello. Alrighty, awesome. Cool, here we go. Now we've got all kind of mad action. Cool. Let's move this dude out of the way. We'll look at this pal. Hooray. Oh my god, I can't even tell you how happy I am that this finally came a lot. All right, so this is my fake PayPal uh, phishing site. I have basically everything on. Um, you can see my uh, image highlighter is going, going on there. Um, here's the IP query. And so, and these are all, by the way, bound to keystrokes. So you don't ever have to actually use the mouse, which is nice. Uh, so again, one at a time here. Uh, we're cool. I have it. Thank you. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, like I said, the IP query goes out, does geolocation, which is handy. Uh, this happens to be correct. This is, this is my server out in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, incidentally, I can open up a tab on DNS stuff, blacklist uh, testing. Uh, not so great for websites by themselves, but for phishing sites, which also double uh, often as email relays, uh, I can very quickly uh, look up 
see if this guy is evil. Uh, since it's my server, I hope not, and it's not. Okay. Uh, nice, and that's uh, open in another pile. Um, another great feature of of uh, Grease Monkey is that you can record uh, your own custom messages in the JavaScript console. Uh, so this is handy for leaving yourself an audit trail that's uh, easy to copy and paste. Uh, so in this example, uh, what am I doing here? Oh, okay, okay, that's the form inspector singer. Um, so yeah, we can see here that the server info uh, for this page is recorded there in the console. And it's also over here. And so see, I have uh, my, my server last modified. Uh, I can look at other sites too, of course. And uh, it's intensely useful for slash dots, so I can read the uh, Brian Bender quotes in there. Yeah. Maybe not. Oh man, they think they're dumb on me. All right. DNS lookup, uh, we can see that I'm you know, subbing off a pair. I can go out to Netcraft toolbar proper and uh, get the complete information. Uh, again, all, all very clicky-like. Cool. So like I said, uh, this was developed mainly to save myself uh, window space. Um, and uh, clicks. Uh, I can, of course, report myself to Castle Cops if I felt like it. Uh, this guy used to, uh, Castle Cops up until about eight weeks ago uh, was allowing people to just anonymously report phishing websites without any sort of CAPTCHA test. Uh, this is great for me because it's one click, you're done. Um, that changed. Uh, reportedly, they came under attack and so they've instituted this CAPTCHA so I have to uh, replicate that there and you can see in source that, maybe not, there we go, we go. Uh, that all this guy does is that he just recreates a form, uh, the same form that they give you, uh, pulling the CAPTCHA test over, allowing you to uh, put it in, I'm not going to report myself though because this guy's a bit angry at me. We'll report that evil, evil example .com. There we go. So as you can see, uh, that's a lot handier uh, for then opening up new tabs and uh, reporting over to Castle Cops. Another, uh, well, you know what, I have to get rid of some of this stuff. It's kind of cluttery when it's all on. There we go. So this in particular is a Citibank phishing site. As you can see, my console gets drawn all over the place because uh, it's actually using frames. Um, so in order to avoid that ugliness and to actually see what pages you're really looking at and really hitting, we can turn on uh, a frame dissector, uh, which opens up all the frames uh, in their own tabs uh, automatically, uh, which can be handy, especially if you're looking at some phishing or malware site that's pulling its data uh, somewhere else over the internet uh, and presenting them locally. Cool. Okay, well that covers uh, pretty much all of my local functionality. Uh, again, I apologize uh, for my broken flow there. Uh, I want to see if I skipped over anything in my muddling about. Oh, yeah. Let me get back to a little bit on. Let's turn this guy off. I'm going to be out of time shortly. But one thing I like is 
that in order to use GreaseMonkey, uh, as you've seen, um, there's, there's actually quite a bit of JavaScript involved. And uh, it was written for web developers, by web developers who just get angry at other people's layouts that, that they don't like. Uh, however, there's now a uh, platypus toolbar, uh, which adds in a nice point and click interface to, to many of the site design changes that you might want to do with, uh, with GreaseMonkey. So for example, if I want to cut out certain elements like that one, and 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 that one. Let's keep it over to this thing. There we go. Let's get rid of all that crap. Well, they're as. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about that. All right. So I've removed a bunch of elements uh, all without JavaScript. All I have to do now is hit the save. It generates Grease Monkey script for me on the fly, uh, which is handy. I can install it. Uh, and I can go over here. Let's just make sure it's actually installed. It is. Hooray. Oops. Let me go over there, look at it. Oh, thank you. Uh, and we can see it's all well formed JavaScript. A bunch of the stuff in there. Cool. And then we pop back to Spark. This will be uh, consistent across page reloads. It'll take a second uh, because GreaseMonkey acts only after the entire web page has been loaded first. Um, so it's not very good for uh, isolating yourself from scripts, uh, except in one case. Uh, when you instruct Firefox, uh, don't, don't run JavaScript, this does not apply to GreaseMonkey. Uh, so you can force other pages to be neutered from JavaScript, but your local GreaseMonkey will, will still render OK. Uh, which I think is interesting, um, and I'd love to pursue some more work in that, where I think that you can um, use GreaseMonkey as almost like a script prophylactic for yourself, uh, where you can uh, selectively uh, run scripts based on some criteria that you, you dream up, usually through some kind of regular expression, see if there's anything funny in there, like variables named shell code and variables named red address. So, okay, well, I think that's it for me on time. And I thank you all for your patience. Sorry it didn't work out uh, in the top. Uh, but again, uh, I'm, I'm looking specifically for uh, people who are interested in this kind of work. Uh, feel free to email me. It's on, on the slides in your book, and uh, it's on my website, uh, which is plan B. Plan B security .net. Thanks very much.